Okay, the three last principles. That's a long one, who wrote such a long section? Let's see. So 10, principle 10, recognizing our chakra type could be crucial for the fulfillment of our individual higher call. When we know our type clearly, we can follow with accuracy our destiny while avoiding the pitfalls of our personality. We also don't need to get stuck in a system or life structure that doesn't really suit us. Like the wrong relationship, wrong work, or wrong spiritual practice. And this is the thing. If I don't know who I am, then I put myself in certain places with certain people. Like, let's say, uh, uh, when I'm a certain chakra type and I live in the same house with a different chakra type without mutual appreciation and uh, without a fulfillment, a, f a complete fulfillment of, of our gifts with, to each other, then not only that we will not be tolerant to, towards each other, but we will greatly dislike each other's needs and tendencies. You see? So then, uh, to be with a first chakra type, for example, when you are a second chakra type, we're wanting only excitement. And your first chakra type uh, husband or wife they want routine. <laughs> and, and whenever you say, come on, let's go on adventure. And the first chakra type looks at you and, what adventure? Let's, let's talk about the small details of life. We need to even, to even reinforce them more. <laughs> we need stability. What about our future? We haven't secured anything. So, if we don't understand each other, um, we will suffer a lot. Um, when we don't live out our chakra type, we are quite, we will be unhappy. It's because we are trying to be someone else. And that never works. So, um, even, by the way, in spiritual practice, often we, we think that, that there is like, you know, some kind of one practice for everyone. This is ridiculous. You see? Because, because uh, uh, some types, they can, could never sit for, for long meditation. And some types are not interested in, uh, in, uh, in inquiry or in service or in devotion. So, some need more independent ways. Some need to be more dependent. So, to we need to, to, this knowledge, in order to, to make the right choices that make us feel at home, feel that, that we are in the right place for us, then our constitution can, can flow. Some chakra types, uh, uh, can never be self-employed. And if they try to be self-employed, they just suffer. And they don't manage. And some, if you try to, they try to be employees, that's a disaster. So, we need also to understand that. <laughs> I 
I love in this uh, type of teachings uh, when everyone, uh, when people are smiling or laughing. <laughs> yes. Eleventh principle. We could feel each personality type within our chakras and be inspired by their gifts. That's a very important one. I cherish this one principle very much. Any healthy society requires all types to influence and support each other. That is why the personality types are also key to harmony in relationships. Imagine an organization in which, a, in which the organization recognizes, okay, you are first type, second type, third type, fourth type. So, so each one has their role and knows exactly what to do, gives exactly uh, their uh, gifts, but also at the same time appreciated by the others exactly for this not rejected. Then, then there is, of course, happiness in a system. That is why we are not, I'm not going to, to let you merely identify with your type and to live with it uh, happily ever after. Every meeting I'm going to annoy you with uh, the practice, practices of, of embracing the, the, this chakra type worldview. You see? So that we can become, we can find this, this worldview in us and, and cherish it. Why? First of all, because, because everything in the world is dormant in us all worldviews we can we can we are flexible enough and we to be complete human beings we need at least to know that we can freely move between perspectives but second is that if we learn to be, to, to be compassionate and, to, and, uh, and sympathetic towards this, this part in us, then we can like it in others, you see? Then we don't see it like, uh, oh, this, this other type that I, I can't even understand. Anything that I find within myself, I can, I can uh, tolerate outside me. This is the law. <laughs> and the last principle. In a broader view, we can locate the chakra types in societies, nations, cultures, religions, and forms of art. This can become a useful tool for a better appreciation of the gifts each chakra type has to offer us. At a certain point in this course, you will start, a, a, I don't know, watching a movie or seeing a certain advertisement or looking at a certain a, a, a video on Facebook. And you will already, or looking at a certain a painting and your mind will immediately go like, oh, what a nice second chakra expression. Or oh, what a, uh, this nation is so third chakra type. So, <laughs> because this is a, a way to, uh, to understand diversity, but not only to understand it, but also to, to like it, to appreciate it. So this is the, the added contribution of this system, that it promotes 
not only self-knowledge, but also, in a way, a, an opening of the heart. So these are the 12 principles. And everything that we will study will revolve around these principles. Now you are uh, most welcome to, uh, to ask questions about uh, all that I said. And uh, uh, please, yes, Tom. I have two questions. Yes. Um, Just please, uh, when you ask questions, if it's in English, Please, uh, uh, just loud enough so that uh, Theresa can hear. Uh, and if it's in German, just loud enough so <laughs> that Theresa can hear, yes. <laughs> no, but seriously, I just, what I try to express is that you are uh, invited to ask in both languages. Um, then I will get this thing. Um, so don't feel uh, intimidated uh, because you can't formulate a question in English. Yes, so you can ask in German now. Yeah, this is exactly the point, because it is not good for a seventh chakra type to, experience, to practice only seventh chakra practices. This is a sure a path to imbalance. <laughs> you see? And this is, when I speak about, about uh, uh, restraining excesses, I'm saying that the seven chakra type, for example, would need to balance it with lower chakra type practices. So, uh, so it's very important because if we follow through only our inclinations, we are uh, we will reach exhaustion, uh, 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 nervous breakdown, uh, psychosomatic illnesses. It sounds scary, right? But, uh, but this is what I see uh, in people, that they simply, uh, their overflowing tendency at a certain point goes, goes against itself. So balance is always that you need to take your other polar, your other extreme, and, uh, and uh, apply to. You see? Only then you, you, it, it cools you down. It makes, uh, uh, it makes you, uh, your tendency um, express sufficiently, but not overflow. Okay. Hey, come on. This is, uh, this is for the third part of the course. This is advanced teaching. Um, but I will say, just in short, um, in the last, in the third part of the course, we will uh, study something that is called the, the seven faces of God. And uh, the, this system basically aims at this, this kind of, uh, of uh, fulfillment. I will say it in one sentence, that the, ch the chakra system is just like is, is the, uh, let's say, multifaceted uh, God or, or divine, uh, the div uh, divine reality manifests in human life. Then each chakra type has the destiny 
to fulfill one facet of the diamond that is called the divine reality, to bring it to, uh, to maximal expression, uh, to show one face of God. This is how I call it, uh, metaphorically. But this is only because you already studied. This is why it is stuck somewhere at the end <laughs> of the teaching. <laughs> okay, anything, uh, please? More questions? You can also ask over there. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, these are excellent questions. Um, <laughs> is it nurture or nature? Basically, it is a, um, it is a grasping our uh, what we can call a soul design, meaning the uh, our uh, deepest core of uh, of uh, uh, attractions. Uh, is designed by, uh, by a certain uh, purpose of the soul or journey of the soul. What we are meant to, uh, um, to learn and to manifest in life. So in a way this precedes nurture and nature. But you are very right to, uh, to ask and to mention this fact that it can be uh, suppressed through different experiences. And, uh, and that is why it's like uh, extricating, releasing a diamond from, a, a, from a, let's say, the outer layers of personality that we develop with time. You see? So uh, in that sense, it is, uh, it is basically very similar to, to be able to to listen to our uh, soul's deepest call, you see? Um, some of us are more aligned with it. Some of us, uh, let's say, they, uh, uh, they have shied away from this, uh, uh, from this uh, uh, natural or inherent call. Okay? Yeah. Now, one more thing that, uh, that is in your question. Uh, it takes quite a lot of time in, in lifetime to stabilize as our chakra type. This means that uh, uh, if I have, for example, I have a daughter 12 years old, I can't really uh, tell perfectly what her personality type is. And why is that? It is because the personality is not uh, consolidated, is not crystallized. And, uh, and around until the age of, of 28 or uh, maxima, maximum uh, 30, we still uh, go through uh, processes of, of development of the chakras themselves. So then, for example, almost any teenager exhibits a, a typical chakra, a second chakra personality, right? It's like, uh, and then to say, oh, this is surely a second chakra type because uh, they are clubbing all the time, uh, taking drugs and, uh, and dancing and, uh, and falling in love and getting excited and then crying. <laughs> Really? So you're describing now something like <laughs> most of, of the population that is, uh, that is around the ages of... <laughs> um, uh, uh, around the uh, uh, teenage uh, years. And then, uh, for example, when we start becoming rebellious, then saying, okay, so this is surely... So we cannot, we cannot really determine because with the, our chakras are still like in, a, uh, in development. Um, and that is why uh, the, we can be confident 
in, in uh, uh, evaluating a chakra type more uh, from the age of 28 onward. You see? Sometimes, uh, often it can be uh, less, some, like 20s in general, but, uh, but uh, surely not teenagers, children and so on. For that we need numerology, astrology, and the uh, systems that uh, um, um, that can overcome the um, what we see, what we can learn from uh, from uh, actuality, from reality. Yes, uh, one more question, please. Both. You, we can find it uh, uh, organ-related uh, or gland-related, but we can also find uh, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, greater than that. But we will talk about it uh, uh, when we enter each one. Yes, it's not like you find it uh, specifically in that area of the like uh, six chakra types uh, or, uh, suffer from headaches or something like that. It's not that uh, simplistic, yes. <laughs> it's more general uh, uh, bodily tendencies, just as they are general uh, bodily uh, outlines, uh, characteristics of each, uh, each uh, type. Last question, yes. Yeah, completely. And we're going to talk about this. Uh, um, some chakra types, they don't really get along with, it, <laughs> with each other. Uh, and I wouldn't put them uh, in the same house. Um, but, but if they uh, learn about the gifts of each other, they could overcome it. You see, so uh, uh, in that sense, uh, it is not like a, a law, like you cannot. First chakra type cannot live with second chakra type. If they, if they agree not to be rigid and over self-identified, uh, love, and understanding can, can overcome uh, this uh, more, let's say, basic law of attraction. Okay? Good, very good. So, what we are, uh, uh, we are doing now is taking, uh, we take a break of 20 minutes. We meet again at uh, uh, 20 to 8. Good. Thank you.